Hey, Tiny T Prepper here, and wanted to show you how uh, I'm I'm saving some money monthly, and thought y'all might be interested. I don't know if you have cable, uh, internet, or what you guys all use for that, but if you use cable like I do, uh, you have the option of either renting a, a, a modem that the cable modem that they provide you from the company, or you can. That's my computer starting up. Sorry about that. But uh, you can also uh, buy your own and save yourself some money. I was looking at my bill. I noticed that uh, I was paying eight dollars a month for a cable modem, and I had I, I knew it came from the company and stuff, but I didn't realize they were charging me eight dollars a month. And you can buy a cable modem like this one. This one just over a hundred dollars. I think it was one hundred three or something like that. And just a year, you'll have it paid for. And this one's actually the one I had it was a little bit older. We already took it out here. Let me show it to you. This is the one that was provided for the cape from the cable. And this one's a little bit older one. I'm not sure what the speed on it was, but I know when uh, I was talking to one of the cable guys at the church where we have a hookup, he was saying, well, that one's an older model and you know, it'd be a little bit faster if you get a new one. And I noticed my internet had been sluggish and it possibly partly due to the, the cable modem also. But anyway, this is one that I'm going to return back, and that's going to save me $8 a month. So to me, that's, that's quite a bit of money. Now, uh, this one also, if you notice on here, is a surfboard modem, and it also has a Wi-Fi and a router in it. To, in it. On this other one, it only has the, it doesn't have the Wi-Fi built into it. It has the router, uh, so I can plug, and what that means is it has plugs on it, on it like in the back here. Well, this one doesn't even have the router. This just has a cable modem on it. So this provides, this here goes to uh, the, just to your device, one computer. Or if you know how, you can plug this into another router, which is what I'd done. I had uh, another router here. Find it. I had this one here, this Cisco router, went from Linksys. And this is what I use. This is a wireless router. But it's not a cable modem so what this one does here is it uh, takes that signal from the cable modem and it lets me hook up more than one uh, device to the internet so with this one that I had this old one from the cable company it only hooked up one device and so the device I had it hook up that yellow cord went to my wireless uh, router and that's how I hooked up things wirelessly and it also had plugs on the back where I could plug in printer and, and the computer that was sitting next to the cable this cable modem. So anyway, now this new one, it actually does three things for me. This one has uh, the router on the back where I can plug in my printers and other devices that are next to the this cable modem and it also has a Wi-Fi router in it so I can hook up wireless devices. My wife has an iPad, cell phones, uh, our laptops we can all connect to this uh, wirelessly now the other router I had the wireless router that links this one it was pretty simple it it wasn't uh, real confusing or anything pretty straightforward to hook up but now with this one device I'm replacing two devices so that gives me a little bit less uh, complication there on the wires and stuff like that and so it uh, it uh, you know simplifies things that way then a little bit less clutter laying around. Plus it's a newer product, so it should be a little bit faster and it's also gonna save me, the big thing is $8 a month. So I'm gonna return this other one here, this old one. I'm gonna return back to the cable company and they'll take off that charge every month I've been getting here. And in a year I'll have this paid for and and hopefully, like it says here, it'll be faster. You know, it says here, 8x speed. I ain't sure just what they base that on. Sometimes you know they advertise it on it, but this has pretty good reviews, and it's one that uh, the cable company recommends. You'll want to do that to make sure it's compatible with the cable company that you have, uh, or whoever your internet uh, provider is. If you're going to use your own, uh, go to their website and see if they have something they recommend. And this is a model that they they have listed as one that they that you can buy and replace theirs with. So I'd went to the Roadrunner website where I pay my bills online and found this one listed and 
It was available, so I ordered it from Amazon, and I hooked this up. It was pretty straightforward, but I'm, I'm kind of a computer tech guy. That's what I do for a living, so even though it was, you know, kind of straightforward, I'll show you. It's got a lot It's got a lot more to it than what your regu my regular router does. You know, with this other one here, simply it's plugged in, plus they configure it for you, so you, you plug it in, and, and then the other router, fairly straightforward, you plug it in, and and it was fairly easy to configure. Now I had some other configurations on it just because of uh, some of the stuff I was doing, but uh, it, it was pretty easy. The other router that links this one that I have. Now this one has a lot more options on it. I can have a, I have my private network. I can also have a public network if I wish. And I disabled that stuff and and things on it. But uh, it has a lot more features on it, which makes it a little bit more complicated. So it's kind of a little bit advanced on this. So if you're not a little bit tech savvy, I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd recommend this. You might, from my video, be able to just get one of these and set up and save yourself eight dollars a month. But you probably won't get all the use all the features. But I'm not using all the features. So you know, if I, I'll show the rest here on how this looks when I get it hooked up uh, here in a little bit. Cable modem after I got it hooked up. And remember now, this has the built-in wireless, and so it's got the light down here showing the wireless is active it's got this this part uh, showing the other lights I got a couple things plugged into it and that shows I'm online with the cable modem and they got the power up here but two blue ones are the uh, stuff I got plugged into and back so it's got things there so anyway once you get this set up you wanna you wanna have this plugged in here you wanna have your your cable so here's the cable wire going into it hook that up then you have this wire going to, I got one wire plugged into any one of these ports back here. here you can see these ports and plug one wire into the port and into the back of your computer and have it hooked up to this here and then have plug in the power there's a little power wire adapter down there power supply have that plugged in ready to go and your computer on then you got to call your cable company and have them uh, uh, list this modem on their records and give it access because they need to know some information on it and they'll ask you off the uh, uh, modem there's some numbers on here they'll ask you for the serial number and also the MAC address on it and you just give that to them and then they're able to add that to their system and give you access to, to their modem and then to hook up the modem once you get that you go to a URL and on this one it is 192.168.01 you go to that uh, after they've hooked you up well, and show that you have internet access and then once you get that you want to configure your modem so I got in here and I went to this web utility there's some buttons on here to do automatic but I prefer to do everything manually because sometimes I ain't sure what that does when you do that and you don't you don't understand what happens or what it, what it configures on your modem. It might not be exactly what you want. So I like to do everything manually and do my own settings on it. So do that first and then come down here and first thing we're going to do is uh, make sure you're on that status. See that's up there yellow. Click on that and then come down here and click on security tab. When you get there there are two things you want to set. Uh, I'd change your username. That way it's a little bit harder for people to figure out what to use on your login. I changed mine to something else and got to enter the current username which is admin and then enter the the current password which they give you. I forget what the current password what the password was they use. It might have been Motorola I think was the default. So change it from that and then put in the new username you want and then re-enter it and apply it. Now make sure you record this someplace where you're not going to lose it or forget it and keep that safe. Uh, don't change it because then you gotta go through and reset the modem which is kind of a pain now underneath this where it says change username there's also a change password you want to make sure you change that default password as well as the username so and that's a nice feature a lot of them that you can't change the username on but you can change you only change the password this one allows you to do both so in this one you just enter the current username uh, you'll put that new one if you changed it but otherwise it'd be admin for the default otherwise put your new one there then enter your password and I always use a mixture of uppercase lowercase numbers and and I usually use symbols but I notice on this one they don't allow you to use symbols at least I think not because I put that in it kept failing on it and I had to keep it and finally I left out I changed my password to something different and 
didn't use any special characters and, and it went in. So I'm kind of thinking this, I don't like that as much about this because that, you know, if you can use like the ampersand or the pound sign, percent, you know, some of those other special characters, it makes it a little bit harder password. So I always use uppercase, lowercase, and numbers and make this kind of difficult uh, so people can't hack in and, and get into your modem. All right, so that those are the two things that changed, and that will get you online. Now, if you want to make the wireless work, you got to click up here on the wireless tab. Let me click up here. Okay, get switched over to that. Now, a couple things I changed on this. One was on primary network. What I changed was just the network SSID. You see there, I just put in some letters and. And what that does is allow you to uh, is what you see when you go to when you're looking for Wi-Fi's and you see all those things on your laptop pop up the ones you can hook to that's what shows up that's the SSID and and it's just the the name that's going to be broadcast that you use that you click on you know on your computer to connect to your wireless network so I changed that to something different there just something I'd recognize rather than that default one that comes with it that way of uh, I'm around somebody else has a Motorola modem it doesn't look like the same thing it probably was a little bit different so that's one thing I changed now the other thing is over here I changed on the guest network it had that available and all I did was come over here and click disabled on it okay that was the only two things I changed on this and that gave me my wire oh wait now I, I did that and then I also put in an encryption key for it that was on the primary network sorry about that on the encryption key. I left this on the, the type of encryption down here that came with the default and then I typed in an encryption key, fairly long one, and this one you can use whatever you, you want to on that one. And so I changed that and or actually I left what the default was. I have one that's automatically generated and so I got that and so that uh, that you can either change, you can put something else in there if you want to. Otherwise those are the only only settings I change other than here on the guest network where I disabled it and that gave me my Wi-Fi access and it's going to save me eight dollars a month so that's fairly easy to set up and configure like I say you do need to call a cable company because you can't just plug it in it works they need to know what it is they need to know this serial number and the the MAC address off it if you don't know what the MAC address is it's MAC and they have a couple of them listed on it so and they which one they needed it was, you don't see it here, but there, there's two of them there and they'll tell you which one they need. Just tell me you see two, let's say MAC in front of them and, and I think it's HVAC or something like that or something like that was the one that they needed off of it. So anyway, uh, Tiny T Prepper signing out. You all have a good day and hopefully you all save some money if you watch this video and, and are paying a rental fee on one. You can get your own and hook up. Uh, your own modem and and save yourself some equipment if you're using two like I was or if you only have one device hooked up you'll be able to hook up multiple if you get a cable wireless modem and the, mo the model on this one was the surfboard modem Wi-Fi router and it's the SBG 6580 let me get that up here so you can make sure you can see that get focused in good maybe There it is, SBG 6580. That's the model I got. And of course, I said you need to check and see uh, what models they recommend. And they'll be a little bit different on configuration, but hopefully this one's general enough. Maybe they're they're similar and you'll be able to know. So anyway, Tiny T Prepper signing out. Y'all have a good day.